The heroine of the story, Miko, has the unfortunate ability to see horrifying ghosts and spirits. Some of them are interested in beautiful girls with hot bodies and touch girls' bodies a lot, while some are very powerful and will suck away energies from humans. What's even more frightening is that if they see through Miko's ability, she will be eaten immediately. Therefore, Miko must pretend to be a normal person to survive. Can Miko keep her secrets? Like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will recap this anime for you. Miko is a high school student. Like most people, she doesn't believe there would be ghosts. Even if she sees a horror show, she won't be frightened. However, a sequence of odd events occur, disrupting her mind. One day, when she gets up, she notices a dog barking at a garbage dump where there is no one. While washing up, she sees a strange handprint in the mirror, but Miko doesn't care much about these events. She comes to school as usual after eating breakfast. In the hallway, she bumps into a female classmate named Yuria, who almost talks to her but decides not to. During class, Miko notices a soccer ball rolling on the playground while no one is there. In addition, she always has the feeling that someone is watching her. All these things are very strange. After school, Miko suddenly finds her charm goes missing so she says goodbye to her friend Hannah and returns to the classroom alone. As she searches for the charm, a human-shaped mist flashes behind her, and the lights in the classroom begin to flicker. Feeling scared, she leaves the school in a hurry. Because it is raining outside, Hannah sends her a message asking if she has been caught in the rain. To make it easier for Hannah to confirm the situation, Miko sends her a selfie. Strangely, as soon as she posts the photo, countless photos appear on the screen. Photos keep shaking and finally turn into a terrifying human face. Miko is terrified and can only repeatedly remind herself that there are no ghosts existing. But when she picks up her phone, a terrifying ghost appears and demands to know if Miko can see her. Afraid of being eaten by the ghost, Miko pretends she sees nothing. She forces herself to calm down and ignore the ghost's existence. The ghost eventually vanishes and Miko returns home safely. Unexpectedly, while preparing for bed, she sees the strange handprint appear in the mirror again, along with the ghost of a man in a suit. With the experience before, Miko feels much calmer this time. While pretending to wash her face, she prays that the ghost would leave quickly. Unfortunately, her prayer is not fulfilled, and the ghost stays in the bathroom staring at her. Miko is very terrified. To have a good sleep, she takes the traditional method of putting a bowl of salt in her room to drive away ghosts. In addition, she searches the internet and comes to the conclusion that exorcismal prayer beads can drive away ghosts. Just as Miko attempts to sleep, a ghost suddenly gets into the quilt and calls her mom. Realizing that salt is not working, she is determined to buy prayer beads. When she wakes up, everything seems to return to normal, and she doesn't encounter ghosts again. However, when she comes to school, a ghost comes to her through the window and says good morning to her. Miko is very nervous. She grips the hem of her skirt tightly, pretending she doesn't see anything. It works. The ghost mistakenly thinks Miko can't see her and leaves silently. Later, Miko and Hannah come to the dressing room. Hannah suddenly remembers the scary scene in horror shows where ghosts often hide in lockers. A little scared, she asks Miko to help open the locker and take out her mobile phone. Miko comforts herself it is just a TV show and boldly opens the locker. Frighteningly, a disembodied head is there just as Hannah said. To help Hannah get her mobile phone, Miko can only pluck up the courage to reach out to the ghost. After taking out the phone, Miko falls to her knees in fear. However, the problem is not over. During the lunch break, a ghost suddenly emerges from Hannah's desk and hugs her tightly. Seeing this, Miko pretends to faint out of anemia, pushes Hannah's desk away, and escapes with Hannah before the ghost takes action. Unexpectedly, the ghost does not leave. It has been very close to Hannah's body and keeps touching her. To save Hannah, Miko takes her to the infirmary. Thinking that alcohol can disinfect, she intends to use it to kill ghosts. She sprays a large amount of alcohol on Hannah. In the end, Hannah's school uniform is wet with alcohol and becomes transparent. Seeing this, the ghost becomes more excited and even less willing to leave. Just when Miko doesn't know what to do, the teacher from the infirmary suddenly appears. Perhaps because the teacher has an even more sexy figure, the ghost is immediately attracted to her. After school, Miko and Hannah come to the dessert shop. Miko accidentally ends up in a line of ghosts who seems to queue up to the netherworld. Luckily, Hannah spots Miko standing on the side of the road and pulls her back to the dessert shop in time. On the way home, they come across an abandoned kitten. Because pets are not allowed in Hannah's apartment, they intend to find an adopter for the cat online. At this time, a young man offers to adopt the cat. Miko discovers that he is haunted by many evil cat spirits and she immediately rejects him. Finally, they give the cat to a middle-aged man, who looks very intimidating but is kind-hearted and are surrounded by many friendly spirits. At the weekend, Miko and Hannah make an appointment to go shopping together. They agree to meet at a coffee shop. While waiting for Hannah, Miko encounters a female ghost who follows a handsome man and keeps confessing to him. 
At this time, the ghost finds Miko looking at the handsome man and becomes very angry. Miko has to take out her phone and search for a photo of a bald man, thinking that Miko likes the bald man. The ghost no longer guards against her. Unexpectedly, the man who has been entangled by the ghost mistakenly thinks that Miko has a crush on him and takes the initiative to talk to her. Miko ignores him, just as she is about to leave. The man's girlfriend appears. It turns out that the couple are both unfaithful in relationships and has drawn a lot of ghosts. There are even more ghosts behind the girl, determined to stay away from them. Miko immediately asks Hannah to leave. After then, she buys four strings of prayer beads while shopping. At first, the ghosts are driven away by these prayer beads. But when she encounters a powerful ghost, the prayer beads suddenly lose their effect. Miko is very disappointed, and she thinks that it is because the prayer beads are too cheap. Finding that Miko is very attached to the prayer beads, Hannah invites her to visit the godmother, who is a fortune teller running a spiritual business. The old lady quickly sees the faint shape of a ghost behind Miko, as well as Hannah radiating a powerful energy aura, which causes her to attract ghosts. Fearing that the girls will be in danger, Godmother gives Miko her most powerful prayer beads. Unfortunately, the prayer beads still cannot resist the power of the ghost. They break as soon as Miko put them on, realizing that her strength is too weak. Godmother is hit hard and decides to close the store and retire at home. One day, Miko is watching TV with her younger brother Kaisuk. She suddenly feels thirsty and decides to go downstairs to the vending machine to buy a drink. While inserting coins, she accidentally drops a coin on the ground. She crouches down to pick up the coin, only to see a tiny ghost. Perhaps because she has seen too many scary ghosts. She thinks this tiny ghost is very cute. She pretends to lose her coins and wants to tease the ghost. Miko follows him to the corner, only to find that he has turned into a terrifying ghost. To protect herself, she can only pretend to see nothing and picks up the coin on the ground. Even if the ghost let out a big stink, she endures it desperately. At this time, a crow takes the coin. Miko hurriedly stands up, pretending not to see anything. She turns around and immediately runs back home. Noticing Miko's strange behavior recently, Kayasuk becomes suspicious of her. While communicating with his classmates, a female classmate tells him that if a girl starts acting strangely, she must have fallen in love. Agreeing with the idea, Kayasuk decides to secretly follow Miko to see if she is in a relationship. Miko is unaware that Kayasuk is following her. She comes to the bookstore and reads a lot of supernatural books, hoping to find a way to drive away ghosts. As soon as Miko leaves, Kayasuk walks to where she had just stood to see what book she was reading. Coincidentally, because of their height difference, the books Kayasuk finds are all love-related books, such as The Season of Love and 99 Ways to Please Your Lover, which makes Kayasuk very devastated. Later, while Miko is bathing at home, a ghost comes in the bathtub. Miko wants to get up and leave, but she doesn't anticipate the ghost to do the same. Miko is at a loss when Kayasuk opens the door and offers to take a bath with her. She is eventually saved thanks to Kayasuk. Miko's psychic abilities have tormented her a lot. The only thing that brings her joy is seeing her late father. She misses her father so much that she becomes upset whenever she hears his caring words. But she can't show off her abilities. All she can do is hide and grieve silently. In fact, Miko is not the only one who has psychic abilities. Yuria can see ghosts as well. Yuria, on the other hand, is not afraid of ghosts and enjoys these experiences. She takes the talent as God's gift to her and it has a unique meaning. Simply put, she is suffering from adolescent delusions. Yuria once frequented Godmother's store, hoping to learn supernatural knowledge there. One day, she goes to the store as usual and is very disappointed to find the store has been closed. While looking for Godmother, she comes across Miko and Hannah, who are shopping together. At that time, Miko discovers the ghosts around Hannah and makes up an excuse to keep Hannah away from the ghosts. Witnessing the scene, Yuria deduces that Miko possesses psychic powers as well. To confirm her assumption, Yuria takes Miko to the equipment room during PE class, where there is no one around. Yuria asks Miko if she could see the ghost. Receiving no answer, Yuria takes the initiative to tell Miko that she can see the ghosts as well. But Miko continues to deny it. It turns out that the powerful ghosts Miko can see are invisible to Yuria, because at this moment, there is actually a very powerful evil ghost in this room. If Miko reveals her psychic abilities, her life will be threatened. Yuria is unaware of the abnormality. She takes out the prayer beads given by Godmother, intending to show Miko her ability. Unexpectedly, the prayer beads break immediately. The ghost then realizes they can see him and becomes very excited. Miko suspects they are in danger and promptly pretends to see nothing. She grabs Yuria's neck and deliberately says to her, You're lying again, and dishonest children will be punished. Yuria is so frightened that she loses consciousness. 
when she comes to herself, she is in the infirmary. Miko wants to explain the existence of evil ghosts to Yuria, but worries about putting her into danger. Therefore, she can only politely urge Yuria to be cautious in the future, and had better pretend to see nothing. However, Yuria mistakenly thinks Miko is threatening her and feels very humiliated. After then, on her way home, Miko meets a strange old lady. At first, she thinks the old lady is a ghost, but soon finds out that she is a real person. Miko breathes a sigh of relief and helps send the old lady home. It turns out that the old lady is suffering from Alzheimer's disease, which causes her to be absent-minded at times. Just as Miko is about to leave, a male ghost appears and continually whispers a set of numbers to her. What is even more strange is that the ghost approaches the old lady and repeats the numbers to her. Miko is very confused. She types the number on her phone and shows them to the old lady. Surprisingly, when the old lady sees the numbers, she brings out a safe box and opens it with them. It turns out that the box contains the gifts given to her by her late husband. Seeing the safe box being opened, the male ghost thanks Miko and leaves. Only then does Miko discover that she can use her ability to help others in addition to suffering. In the next scene, Miko begins to worry about Hannah's constant attraction to powerful ghosts. According to Godmother, Hannah is radiating a powerful energy aura that attract ghosts. She has been followed by ghosts for a long time, who has been sucking her energy away. As a result, she gets hungry easily. Miko is very worried about Hannah's health condition. To find a way that can get rid of the ghosts, she takes Hannah to Mikitsudani Shrine, hoping the power of the shrine will drive away the ghosts around Hannah. The shrine is very dilapidated and seems to be abandoned. Although feeling a little disappointed, Miko makes a prayer at the shrine and wishes the ghosts around Hannah can be driven away. The shrine seems to be incredibly powerful, and the shrine spirits immediately respond to Miko's pleas. Two fox-like spirits appear, posing as shrine spirits. They use their abilities to cut off the arm of the ghost. Unfortunately, once the ghost begins to fight back, they are torn apart by the ghost. Without psychic abilities, Hannah sees nothing and asks Miko to take pictures with her. Through the camera, Miko discovers that the ghost has been killed by a more powerful spirit. After then, the spirit whispers something incomprehensible to Miko. Despite her confusion about what happened, Miko is relieved that the ghosts surrounding Hannah have vanished. Hannah posts photos she takes at the shrine online, which has garnered multiple likes. Happy to see this, she decides to pick up photography as a hobby and buys a camera. Meanwhile, Yuria takes the initiative to approach Hannah. Since being stunned by Miko last time, Yuria has vowed to take revenge on her. After learning about Hannah's photography dreams, Yuria praises her photos and offers to take her to a place that is perfect for photography. Hannah joyfully promises the invitation. At the weekend, she and Miko, led by Yuria, come to a long, abandoned tunnel that has been home to a significant number of ghosts. Yuria intends to use these ghosts to force Miko to admit her psychic abilities. As they enter the tunnel, a group of ghosts emerge from the ground. Seeing this, Miko wants to persuade Hannah to return, but is stopped by Yuria, who once again praises Hannah's photogenic abilities, emphasizing how gorgeous the scenery behind the tunnel is. Hannah is so happy that she immediately takes a picture of Miko. Through the photo, Miko sees that the number of ghosts in this tunnel is huge. At this time, a spider-like ghost appears beside them. It traps the other ghosts and eats them all. But for Yuria, she only sees the ghosts disappearing, mistakenly thinking that Miko is using her power to remove the ghosts. Not wanting to leave behind, she reaches her hand to one of the ghosts closest to her. Coincidentally, the ghost is eaten by the spider-like ghost, leading her to believe she has succeeded. Unexpectedly, the spider-like ghost notices Yuria and suddenly appears behind her. At this point, Miko immediately grabs her and flees, causing the ghost to notice her ability. Just as the ghost intends to attack them, the two shrine spirits appear and repel it. Before leaving, they gesture a one to Miko. Miko is both puzzled and rejoicing. Although she has no idea what the gesture means, they could have died here without the spirit's help. After the incident, Yuria realizes that she has misunderstood Miko and apologizes to her. Then, they become friends, having been isolated by her classmates. It is Yuria's first time making friends and she is very excited. One day in the fitting room, Miko meets a female ghost who was a waitress when alive. Too scared to stay in the room, she buys the dress and flees the clothing store wearing it. After then, she encounters a ghost with an axe on the subway. It wields the axe and attacks people around it. Because no one can see it, only Miko is in anguish. Miko's psychic abilities, on the other hand, can also allow her to experience some pleasant things. When Miko's head teacher gets pregnant, she is constantly surrounded by a spirit. It turns out that the head teacher was previously pregnant, but her child died before birth, and the late child turned into a spirit, protecting his younger siblings. 
After learning about the teacher's story, Miko is lost in thought. She has no idea why she has psychic powers or what she can accomplish with them. She wants to confront the existence of ghosts like Yuria, but the ghosts are too scary to get used to. After the head teacher takes maternity leave, the substitute teacher arrives. Miko is horrified to see that it is Tono, the man haunted by evil cat spirits who she previously saw. Tono is always surrounded by many terrifying ghosts, including a powerful female ghost. Each time Miko meets him, she will be terrified of the ghosts she will face. One day, when Miko goes to the bathroom, a ghost suddenly comes out of the toilet. She then quickly pretends that there was no toilet paper and flees the toilet cubicle. Surprisingly, she discovers Yuria eating alone in another cubicle. It turns out that Yuria has no friends and is used to hiding in the bathroom to eat. Worrying that Yuria would encounter the ghost, Miko hurriedly takes her out. During this time, Miko encounters Tono, but when she glances at him, the female ghost following him immediately warns her to stop looking. Feeling scared, Miko has to pretend she is in a daze. After school, Miko, Hana, and Yuria go to the dessert shop together. The shop is holding a haunted house event. People who cover the whole distance can win a free box of donuts. Hana is very interested in the event and immediately invites them to participate together. The atmosphere in the haunted house is very scary. NPCs all wear frightening outfits and chase players with weapons. Interestingly, Miko enjoys it and feels very decompressed because she can scream here at will without worrying about being discovered by real ghosts. She happily walks the entire distance and resolves to visit another other haunted house the next time. In the next scene, Miko meets the female ghost following Tono again. During the class, the ghost keeps staring at the female students and seems to have a strong possessive desire for Tono. Unfortunately, Miko is asked by Tono to read the text. Since the ghost keeps staring at Miko, she is so scared that her voice trembles. After Miko finishes the text, Hana suddenly feels a pain in her stomach and asks Miko to take her to the infirmary. Miko speculates that the ghost following Tono is sucking Hannah's energy. If they can't drive away the ghost, Hannah's life is likely to be threatened. However, Miko doesn't know what she can do. After school, she comes for a walk in the park to refresh her mind. At this time, she sees a child waving at her. She unconsciously responds to him. Unexpectedly, this child turns out to be a ghost. He shouts, you see me, and rushes at Miko. Fortunately, the shrine spirits appear and easily defeat the ghost. Before leaving, they stick out two fingers to Miko. This time, Miko remembers the shrine spirits once whispered three times. To her, what they meant was that they would protect her three times. And it is the second time today. Now that Miko has only one last chance left, she must cherish it. To keep Hana from being influenced by ghosts, Miko begins to stalk Tono, hoping to find some evidence of the mistakes he made, so that he can be kicked out of school while she doesn't have to waste her last chance. Tono seems to like cats. Miko follows him to a cat. Just when Tono tries to touch the cat, she stops him. Fearing that Tono will harm the cat, she immediately takes the cat away. Tono rushes after her and angrily asks Miko why she doesn't give him the cat. At this time, the cat suddenly frees itself from Miko's arms and runs towards the road. Fearing that the cat will be in danger, Tono gets hit by a car when saving the cat. Actually, Tono is not a evildoer. When he was a child, his father was unfaithful in love, causing his mother's personality to be twisted. She was so controlling that she would even kill his cat. Later, his mother died and became the ghost following him. Tono has always felt guilty about the cat's death. Therefore, he tries his best to save the unfortunate cats. The evil cat spirits around him are cats killed by cat abusers. They follow Tono for taking revenge on his mother. Miko wants to save him and Hannah just like how Tono saved the cat. So she plucks up the courage and challenges the ghost following Tono. The ghost starts to thrill and immediately rushes towards Miko. At this moment, a golden light appears in front of Miko, badly injuring the ghost. Miko realizes that this is the last chance the shrine spirits give her. After the female ghost is eliminated, the evil cat spirits following Tono are also purified and fade away peacefully. After Tono is discharged from the hospital, he brings the stray cat he rescued back home. After learning about Tono's experience, Hannah feels that he is a very kind person. But what she doesn't know is that every time Tono caught the cat abuser, he didn't call the police, but used his own way to make these people disappear from the world. Meanwhile, Miko has been feeling very uneasy since she has run out of three chances. Therefore, she returns to the shrine to give an offering. She thinks that the shrine spirits are the embodiment of kindness. Thus her offering does not need to be very expensive, as long as it can express her gratitude. But it isn't as simple as Miko thinks. None of the three shrine spirits are real gods, and the offering they want is Miko's body. When they see the cheap offering, they feel very angry. They summon many ghosts to block Miko. Then they open their mouths and want to eat Miko. 
Just then, Miko awakens in bed. What happened to her was just a nightmare. Miko breathes a sigh of relief. She then gets up and prepare for school as usual. Now, she has been used to the presence of ghosts. She arrives at school and finds her friends full of energy. Everything seems to be in a piece. But somewhere she can't see. The three shrine spirits are staring at her. Here comes the end of this anime. At the end of the anime, the shrine spirits appear, which shows that Miko's dream may come true. In general, in addition to the thriller, it is a funny and heartwarming anime. It tries to tell us that don't comment on something before you know the full picture of it. Ghosts are not necessarily evil, and gods are not absolutely kind, let alone humans. Well, that's all for this video. If you like this video, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There are many wonderful anime recaps. See you in the next video.